Okay, let me maximize this. Okay, we got the got the volume going. We're good. Okay, thank you. So, uh, welcome to module six of Sex Without Stress. There's only eight. Uh, it's kind of blowing my mind that we're nearing the end of the the formal process. But as you're going to hear today, as we get into the real action steps of this, the physical part of this, this is a long process potentially. You are not supposed to be done at the end of eight weeks. What I'm hoping is that you are set up for success and that you have had uh, the framework and the understanding and the conversations and the tools you need and enough experience with that, you can carry on and continue to make the progress that you need to make. Uh, I intend when I launch this course again to include you guys in there so you'll have access to office hours in the future, um, however that looks, so that it's not your last opportunity uh, to get some input. But I hope that you're going to end up well on your way. All right, so I'm going to um, start right in with the program. Share my screen. You think I would get better at this every time I do it, but it doesn't really work that way, does it? Okay. Oops. Putting it all into action. I missed my little intro slide, but that's okay. So um, this module is about really, now we've done all this background and all those conversations and all that understanding of what's been happening specifically your role in it so you can start to really you know work on your side of the court uh, and now we're going to put it into an actual touch exercise that really is i mean sometimes it, it feels strange that i use one exercise but it is so versatile and it's so customizable that this really is my favorite tool for changing the things that need to be changed so that's what we're going to do is we're going to put it into action here. And we do this with what I call the giver-receiver exercise. So we're going to learn that tool, and we're going to learn how to set yourself up for success with it. Uh, next module, we're going to come back to it and talk a lot about the kinds of experiences people have, both the pitfalls and the breakthroughs. So we're going to get, you know, I want to get you going with it first and we're going to come back to it and address it again and talk how to, how to debrief it and how to use what happens to strategize about how to proceed. Uh, but for now, I'm going to just introduce this, okay? So the course up until now has dealt with working on insight, okay, which is understanding what's been happening in your mind, in your relationships, in your sex life, you know, thinking about it, right? Understanding insight. Um, so we've challenged thinking about what sex is and what it can be, right? We've learned about attitudes and assumptions that you can adopt to have a really productive sex life. You've examined your past, both with your family and with your relationships. You've talked, you know, we've talked about confronting yourself and your role in the dynamics, right? But now we have to move into change because insight doesn't equal change. It requires a decision to behave differently. Oop, I've got to move my head. You have to decide to behave differently. Now that's driven by insight. That's why I start the whole first part of this course with all that discovery, because I do think it's important to have that framework, but now we have to act, okay? So we have to decide how you're gonna act, what you're going to do. Change is experiential. It happens over time. You need to practice new ways of being and behaving. Okay, so occasionally, People turn this around very, very quickly. I think they're just ready or something. I don't know, confluence or the stars align. But mostly this is experiential and takes practice and is going to take repetition, okay? Lots and lots of practice. So I'm gonna give you this tool, the giver-receiver exercise, which really is my favorite way to practice all the various things you have to practice. So this is a place where you get the experiential work that you do need to change your sex life. It isn't going to change by thinking about it, by talking about it, okay? It doesn't happen in my therapy office. It happens in between those sessions. So this work is crucial to make things different. Whether you are the one eager to change this or whether you are the one showing up because it matters to your partner, whether you're the higher desire or the lower desire, this work is gonna benefit for you, okay? You're gonna have different experiences with it, but I promise you it can be helpful to both of you. So this is where you're gonna practice everything so far. 
And I just want to acknowledge right away that it is contrived. It's totally made up, right? So it feels a little bit awkward. Um, it can feel like homework, like we have to do this thing, but really it's an important framework for change, okay? I like it because it's time limited. It only, you know, it's 10 minute turns. You're focusing on things. You're kind of taking one thing at a time, potentially. You're, we're sort of isolating these roles uh, so that you can really uh, go in with intention and make some changes, okay? So it is, um, it's like the laboratory. I guess I would say, right? Because it's only going to change experientially. And it is meant to evoke responses. It's what we call an elicitation exercise. What happens is important no matter what it is. That's the point. You just go into this exercise and you have an experience. Whatever it is that's important. You notice what comes up for you and we're going to learn from that. Okay? That, so at first we learn more about our problems or our challenges. Over time, we're going to be able to use it to learn to change what we're thinking and doing. Uh, so this is laboratory. It's really crucially important. So the directions for this exercise. For 10 minutes each, you're going to take 10 minute turns. One person is a receiver, one is a giver, and the receiver is totally in charge. Okay, now you don't have to write this down. This, I've got the handout and the materials for you. So you set an alarm for 10 minutes. The receiver is thinking about what touch they would like most in this moment, and then the next moment, and the next moment, and you have to direct the whole time. Okay, you're going to be talking through most of your turn, giving direction and feedback and instructions so that you're getting as close to what you're thinking, uh, you know, what you want is you can. You need to own the experience. It never becomes the giver's job to figure it out or to take over. Nothing happens that you don't specifically invite. They never are supposed to improvise or take it from there or read your mind, okay? You need to direct the whole time when you're the receiver. You are trying to let go of all expectations, all sense of a goal or an outcome. There is no should about this. It's about being in the moment, pursuing what you want to feel. The touch can be sexual or non-sexual. Nothing says it needs to be either one. Okay, there's no expectation that you're supposed to become aroused, that you're trying to get to an orgasm or give one. You're really trying to get out of any sense of like future pacing and just be in the moment. You do not have to match each other. It's not like whoever goes first sets the tone and the other person has to match it. You each are supposed to want what you actually want in that moment or figure it out. You don't have to know. This can totally be a place where you can explore. Just start somewhere and then see if anything comes to you about what you would like better or what you would like next. That's gonna, that might take practice, but you're basically just following your bliss, right? It's this moment-by-moment -moment pleasure and presence without any sense that you need to be going anywhere. When the alarm goes off, 10 minute alarm, remember, you stop no matter what. There's nothing to finish because there's no goal or outcome. We're not aiming for anything, okay? So it doesn't matter if you're super aroused or uh, you also don't stop before 10 minutes. Somebody has an orgasm, it's not like your turn's over because that wasn't the point, right? <laughs> so we're really trying to be, the, the timer helps you have this framework and I think it's gonna help you let go of this idea that something's supposed to happen, okay? And you switch roles. So timer goes off, you switch and the other person is a receiver and you do the same thing, okay? Now, the giver's first job, so the receiver is, well, actually, that's gonna come in just a second. Let me, um, let me continue on here for a second. So 10 minute turn, receiver, right? Switch roles, receiver's in charge. Then when the second alarm goes off, it's been 20 minutes, right? You're done. That is the exercise, that is all you are committed to. At that point, and hopefully not before that, and again, this may take practice, that's when you sort of look up and think, oh, what do we wanna do now? You could do it again. You could have sex or be intimate in some way. You could totally stop, you could get up and go to work. You know, it doesn't matter. I just don't want you to worry about or anticipate that before you get there. You're really practicing not getting ahead of yourself. In that moment, after 20 minutes of the exercise, Think about what we talked about with reactive desire. Some, it's possible 
that you may be interested in sex at that point where 20 minutes ago, no way, right? Because maybe you were able to practice and become present and let go of the worries and show up and have some touch and it felt good and like, wow, my engine sort of turned over. This can be a place to practice some of those other endings we talked about too. Maybe one person had very sexual touch and is super turned on and the other person not so much, but is there some way we can share an experience together that really feels good to both of us? This is, you may have opportunities like that. And while I know that that might make you anxious, uh, that this has not been something that you guys have worked out and gotten comfortable with yet, this is how you get comfortable with it. So I just don't want you to be afraid of that or have that stop you from doing this. It's going to give you some opportunities to practice and just don't feel bad if it takes a lot of practice to get comfortable with this stuff. It's okay. You really can't do this wrong. So the receiver's jobs, when you are the receiver, your first job is to access desire. Okay, so you're trying to figure out some way you actually would like to be touched. Okay, so you're working to find some pleasure in that. And again, it does not need to be sexual. If you don't know what you want, you're working, you start anywhere and see if you can develop some sort of preference. Okay, start by tapping my elbow. Actually, tap a little slow. Actually, if you could just sort of tickle up my arm. You know, you're just going in the moment. And it's, again, it's okay to practice and experiment. You don't have to know, but you're trying to access that desire for touch. It is your job to ask for what you want. Okay, so you have to give instruction. In this exercise, this is verbal. Now, in in life, it can be verbal and nonverbal as long as it's effective, but I really want you to practice putting things into words. You have to be explicit and, ex and specific enough that you get what you want. You know, you're going to have to develop language around some of this. What do you call various parts of your body? You know, very specific little parts of your genitals, perhaps, or whatever it is. How do you describe touch? Like, all of this is going to take some practice, but you're going to get you're going to need to give yourself permission to want and to ask for that. And then you've got to be, figure out how you're going to communicate this. Okay. Oh, and you don't, can I go backwards? Yes. Um, you're asking for what you want too. You are not thinking about your partner. You are not taking care of them. You're not censoring. You're not trying to keep them in their comfort zone. You ask for what you want. Now we're going to get to a minute. Uh, actually, I wrote it on the slide. The, receive, the giver says no if they need to say no. That's crucial. Remember, we, we talked before about how no is a foundation of trust. That has to be the case. So they will take care of themselves, which means you get to ask for exactly what you want. And you may not get it, okay? You're going to have to deal with that, but you're still supposed to ask. Allow yourself to receive. Right now, this um, be present. Be you know, allow yourself to enjoy it, delight, take pleasure as much as you can. For a lot, sometimes this is a real struggle for people to just receive and not do something back, or they're very uncomfortable with that. But that's part of the work. And then you know, just pay attention to what happens. What is it like for you? Did you actually ask for what you really wanted? Did you censor yourself? Could you put it into words? Where did that get difficult? Was it hard to receive? You know, what did you notice? Um, what did you read in your partner that maybe has an impact on you? You know, pay attention. Giver's jobs. Very first one, which I've already sort of mentioned, is say no if you need to say no. Now, I would say you need to say no if it hurts and you don't like it, you know, or it's physically uncomfortable uh, enough, right? And you need to say no if it's going to be upsetting or traumatic. You're going to end up resentful. You're sitting there feeling bad about it. I mean, we all have a different way of experiencing that, but something's telling you, like, I just don't want to be doing this. Like, this is, this is going to make things worse. You need to say no then. And then the receiver just picks something else. It's not like you just, you know, stop. Um, they just pick something else. But you need to take care of yourself. That is fundamental. So for all you maybe lower desire partners or people with reactive desire or people that are maybe feeling resistant to this, I can't emphasize this enough, you get to take care of yourself. You are not supposed to have experiences that are feeling really bad to you, okay? This is important. You get to take care of yourself. Still show up and do this. We're working with those edges like up to that, but you get to say no. You need to do that. Okay, 
Now, if you just want to say no, then I'm going to tell you to do it. Choose to do it. Now, what do I mean by this? This makes me a little anxious. I'm not sure I'm in the mood for this, or this isn't actually what I like. You know, I don't need to say no. It's not going to totally freak me out, or I'm not going to end up pissed off or resentful, or I'm not, this is not going to like dig me into some hole. It just makes me uncomfortable. That's where the growth is. You know, I think we've talked about this before too. We only become comfortable through practice. So everything is uncomfortable for a while. So the, the choice to say, you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm embracing this, even though it makes me uncomfortable or it's not exactly what I want. I'm going to try it. Now, if it gets worse, you might need to say no. You might need to stop. Okay. You always have that option. Always. But getting out of our comfort zone, learning a little bit more about what's going on with that. Can I shift that? What's movable in here? This is a big part of the work. Now, only you as the giver can figure out whether you need to say no or you want to say no. Nobody can judge that for you. That might be in a different place night to night to night or day to day. You know, the same request may be fine one day and you need to say no another. You're the only one who makes that decision. And you may need some trial and error. So you may say no when you don't have to. You might have your line like way far out and you're gonna have to learn to uh, what's having you do that and can you reel it back in. You also may not say no when you needed to and you find yourself in the midst of something with that awful feeling and I don't want to be doing this, it's horrible, you know, I'm going to be so re resentful or so whatever. You may make some mistakes, but that then informs your choices in the future, right? You, you don't have to do this perfectly. You're trying to do your best, but this will, you're going to get better at this over time. Your next job, if you're the giver, is to try to want to give this to the other person accessing desire to give, right? Like if it's neutral or it's easy or you've, you know, you're working with it, you're trying to get into this, what I call this open-hearted space of wanting to give this to your partner. They're asking for the thing they want most in the world right now, at least in terms of touch, right? Can I just want you to have that? Can I want to give it to you? This is not necessarily an easy place to get, but that's the goal with a lot of practice, okay? So we're trying to find that generosity, that, that place where we can just want our partner to be happy and find our role in that. And just like when you're the receiver, you pay attention to your experience. Notice what's going on for you. Did you need to say no? How did you make a decision about whether it was no or not? What kind of stuff came up for you in it? Uh, what did you learn about your discomfort with something? Was that movable? Did you feel that openness and generosity? But, you know, what did you read in your partner that maybe had an impact on you? There's a lot going on. We're going to talk more about this in the next module, but, you know, pay attention to what happens. So here's some notes about this, some thoughts uh, as you have this exercise, okay? First of all, you cannot do this wrong. You cannot fail this. So sort of like I said before, this is the laboratory. The first thing we're going to find are the obstacles, okay? The things that are going on in your sex life will show up in this exercise. You can't do it wrong, okay? Um, we learn from what happens, no matter what it is, even not doing it, there's information on how it didn't happen, just like we were talking about last time about there's information on how we don't have sex, right? So you don't need to fight about the instructions, you don't have to you know, worry that you're failing or it was supposed to go differently. Everything that happens makes sense, and that's what it's for. So don't be discouraged if it seems to go badly. So like I said, everything that's, that's going on in your sex life that's, that's a problem will show up in this exercise in some way. Your challenges with this will be directly related to the challenges in your sex life. So I think about this as sort of it gets the monsters to come out from under the bed, and we really see what we're dealing with in 10-minute segments, one roll at a time which gives us a chance to just sort of observe this more, then we can start to change it, okay? So it, it, will, it will be challenging at first in some ways. Now, it may not be all challenging. Some of it may be a relief. Some of it might feel really great or fun, but there will be challenges. And don't, so don't be discouraged by that. That is how this starts. And control the pacing of this. This is where it's like you don't dive into the deep end. You say no if you need to. You take care of yourself so that while you're stretching yourself, you're not breaking. 
okay? It should not feel traumatic. It should not feel disastrous. So work with um, your side of the court in this to, to still show up and participate, but make sure that it's um, manageable bite size uh, steps that you're taking. I'm mixing my metaphors there. Okay, it's gonna take intention to do this on a regular basis. Uh, because just like you may have been avoiding sex, you, you may avoid this, right? So if you leave this module and say, oh yeah, we should do that exercise, that won't happen. That's like saying, oh, we should eat better. We should save for retirement. You need concrete, specific ownership of this, each of you. So I really suggest that you each take full responsibility for making it happen and that you talk in very, very concrete ways. Can we do this tonight after dinner? Can we put this on that calendar for Friday right after work? Can we do it every other day, uh, go to bed 20 minutes early, whatever it is, but be concrete and really take ownership. This is, you're gonna have to make this happen, okay? And you're gonna have to make time for it. You don't have to be feeling great to do this. So I'll have clients come in and say, well, I was sort of tired and then we were stressed and then we were kind of arguing, we're, you know, but just last night we finally fit it in. It's okay to be tired. It's okay to be irritable. It's okay to be distracted. It's okay to be slightly under the weather. Um, that will affect perhaps what you ask for. It may affect what you need to say no to, but you can still show up and have an experience. So if you're feeling great, you know, that's going to be maybe a, a much more, maybe enjoyable, but certainly much more fruitful exercise, but you'll still have experiences and practice making this a priority if you just show up sort of no matter what. Now, you know, blood and vomit and fire, I guess, call it off. But um, go ahead and use it to try to learn to become present even when some of the th these things are going on. If you're distracted, this is a great way to practice letting that go and being present. If you're irritated with each other, it's a great way to see if, can we set those things aside for a moment and learn to connect even though we have irritations? That's a really useful skill in a relationship. The more you do it, the more you're going to get out of it. All of these things that we're trying to change take practice and repetition. So dig in and just do this over and over and over. In the beginning, it's, it feels awkward and weird and, you know, it maybe causes more anxiety. You're running up to more challenges. But with repetition, you start, first of all, you, get, you break through the sense of awkwardness with it. And you really can sort of settle in and use it effectively. And you're going to start to find that things start to shift and it just becomes easier and easier. And, you know, ultimately more and more enjoyable. I mean, really, how bad is it to have this thing where I get to have exactly what touch I want that you're willing to do for 10 whole minutes and let myself have that? And then I get to do that with you? Like, this is not the worst thing in the world once those obstacles are out of your way. Focus on your own side of the court. <laughs> you are not policing your partner's efforts with this. Besides, may, well, even policing, no, but besides maybe if they're not doing it, if you bring it up and they keep saying no, there's a place to hold them accountable with that and address it. But other than that, the work that's going on on the other side of the court, lots of it's internal. You don't see the struggle about whether they need to say no or not. Are they taking care of themselves? Are they, um, are they tro having trouble finding something what they want? You guys are doing different work on each side of the court and your only job is to focus on you. What are you trying to address every time you show up? What are you working on? What happened for you? What does that uh, show about what you might want to do next? Avoid analyzing each other or judging each other or deciding the other person really isn't, isn't doing their part. And this will mirror uh, how sex goes in your relationship. So that if there is avoidance with sex, there's likely to be avoidance of this exercise. Uh, the person with higher desire for sex may be, very well be the higher desire partner for doing this exercise, right? So remember some of the strategies with this. Try to show up as a team. And if, you know, for instance, for the lower desire partner to take an active role in making this happen and making sure you're talking about the things that are in your way with it if they have to be addressed, right? Not taking it personally if you're the higher desire partner and the other person is resistant, not just you know giving in to sort of resignation or just discouragement. Continue to advocate for it. Continue to figure out what could be going on for them that this all makes sense, right? Like all these uh, same concepts apply. And we're going to use this exercise for growth. This is the laboratory where things change. We're going to talk more about that next module. 
but just keep in mind that this is a long-term kind of repetitive thing. You want to pay attention to what's happening. It informs where the challenges are and it informs sort of your next point of in intervention. Okay, so this, it's a really powerful tool and we want to use the information that you get. Okay, so 